with Curtis Stone, and he's one of the world's greatest chefs until today. Um, <laughs> I think the Rachel is rubbed off on him because he just set his buns on fire, not in a good way. And then he turned our jod and yara, instead of into relish, um, into more of a cold pickled soup. <laughs> so, um, I'd rather <clears throat> refer to it as a tapenade. A tapenade, yes. <laughs> so, Curtis, we could edit all of that out, but these are the last of the brioche bowls. <laughs> Can you try and toast the rolls, yes. please, sir, and make us some relish? You go. Um, Mashups was our theme today when it comes to what we were cooking. <laughs> Curtis made that phenomenal uh, chicken teriyaki pizza and the adult fountain drink. Uh, now I'm going to show you, because I didn't have a chance to in the last segment, how you make the carbonara burgers, which is a mashup of pasta carbonara and a breakfast burger with an egg on top, so you could serve this for brunch, lunch, or dinner. Beautifully done! So, this is cooled pancetta, which is rolled cured meat similar to bacon, but it's not smoky. You can also dice up and render out bacon, that's fine too. We're adding the cooled cooked uh, pieces of crispy pancetta to our bowl with the chopped up one fat handful of cold spaghetti, or this Yum. is bucatini. A little pecorino, a little parm, uh, lots of garlic, of course kosher salt, of course black pepper, uh, or you could use red pepper, whichever you prefer. And I put in a little bit of grassy flat leaf parsley, and then a fat drizzle of EVOO, good olive oil, to help that come together and to help it brown up in the pan. Now, whenever you're mixing burgers that have ingredients mixed into them, a clever trick for tasting if you are happy with the amount of seasonings in your burger is to take a little tiny piece of it, make a tiny little quarter-sized burger, cook it up in a pan and taste it and adjust your seasonings. When you're making any type of patties, I like to push the meat back together into one even mound and score it with the side of your hand so that you know as you're picking the meat up that you have equal portions of meat. So then the last tip for cooking great burgers is to make sure that the patties, nice! Two for two. He's back. I mean, sometimes it's nice to know the right way to do things, <laughs> but also to see the wrong way to do things, okay? <laughs> so, you know, don't do it like this, do it like this. So guys, uh, I like to cook burgers in a cast iron skillet over medium high heat with a really good preheat on the pan. Very hot, flat surface. Cast iron skillets are your best friend if you love burgers or proteins like steak, steak night. Um, I think it's the essential kitchen equipment for that. These are the carbonara burgers. I got them out of the skillet. So inside the burger itself, we have the cold chopped up pasta, the pancetta. Um, it's bacon and egg pasta, basically. We put in a ton of cheese, pecorino, and parm. We have perfectly toasted rolls because Chef Curtis Stone toasted them. <laughs> Twice. Uh, I'm putting a little bit of that giardiniera relish down. I'm gonna grab our crispy bits of spaghetti and the bacon or pancetta running through the patties to put that, that on good. top. And then we top them with eggs over easy, medium, however you like, which means you can eat these burgers for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Delicious. Oh, so please. when you cook eggs, guys, they really should remain white and golden yellow at the center. If the eggs are browning, your pan is too hot, okay? Or you're letting your fat get too hot before you add the eggs. Now, the cool thing about adding an egg to any burger is, of course, the squish factor. Because oh, yeah. then that happens. Oh, yeah. Right? So, oh, the squish factor. Is one for my husband John. He's gonna love that. I think. I think even your mouth is not big enough to take a bite out of that. Oh stuff, really? Mm. Really? Let's, let's see about that. Oh my God. 